Sometimes things look perfect on the surface, but are they? Nah. Yet we should still strive to fix them. Hey, Perth. Yeah? You know how we set up the saw? Okay. Are you ready to go to Home Depot to get the wood? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so we're back and we have all of our wood and the wood is going to be used for a project in the entryway because the entryway is currently a dumping ground. I think that the way that we're going to actually keep it tidy is if we have a nice entryway table there and have it a little bit more decorated. So I think it only makes sense that we build our own table. But the leg's actually going to be diagonal at a 10 degree angle. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I don't, I don't know how to calculate it to be honest. I'm confused. What if we just did it approximate half an inch bigger? We got to cut it to 32. Why? I mean, I put it in this calculator. 12 is right with half an inch. Guess it. That. No just math. using some assumptions. I think so. Thank you. One of the main things that I feel I'm missing is the habitual understanding of how to actually build things. The kind of understanding that comes from either years of watching or years of doing. And what I find for me is that I have to focus so much on trying to understand how something gets built that I'm often so riddled with fear that I'll make a mistake and possibly even worse, that it actually takes away from some of the fun that I would otherwise have. I really feel like building is meant to be kind of like play. Starting out with Lego blocks, the kind of play that might give me the skills to be able to build my own house one day. <laughs> okay, so we were thinking everything was all well and dandy, and then we realized that <laughs> The table sticks out way too far from the wall. Like if it was like this, it'd be fine. If it's like this, it's really far. It's too far. Do you think that the issue is because we mitered the legs to be 10 degrees? We were really going back and forth between the 10 and 5 degrees. We decided on the 10 and now obviously we think that might have been a mistake. We are going to remove the legs and cut them down to be 5 degrees. Ugh. It's annoying. By the way, like everyone I've seen who's done things like this does 10 degrees. So it was only on like a woodworking forum saying, oh, it's like you can do five degrees. So hence why we're going back and forth. It's just annoying when it's like we kind of knew better. So I feel like the table's now gonna be too short because we're gonna have to like cut off from the top and bottom. And it seemed like when we had it out there that it was the right height. So now I'm scared it's gonna be too short. Yeah, you're gonna sacrifice some height. But I don't think it's going to be a lot. Wow. 
That was also my design plan as well, to have that cross beam. And then this piece needs to go this way. vintagey vibe to it and so we want to distress it and I think it makes the most sense to put it all together before distressing it however I feel like for these two like little side pieces it makes the most sense to distress it first then install it then continue on just because it's such a like small little area look at how good this looks doesn't it look so much more like it has character yeah, it has a lot of character. It looks more vintagey. I love it. Just looking at that one piece. <laughs> Should we drill those screws? Yeah, I think so. Um, weird problem to have. No, it's like we're really doing something. I mean, simple things that should be way more simple than they are. Why is this a problem? So a little update for you. We cannot screw in. It literally just won't fit with the drill set. So what I was thinking, we drilled this to just go like this. That works. And it's on the bottom, so you won't be able yeah. to see it. Good God. Good challenges. <laughs> so optimistic of you. Literally, that like this is so cool. Kindle for fire. Yeah. Hello, so it is now the next day and we're probably about 40% done distressing the wood and we still have quite a few steps to do. And Parth is actually leaving. I'm not sure I'm gonna have his help to finish the whole project. I wanted to show you this drill attachment that a lot of people have used to distress wood. It does work pretty well. The trick to it is to actually leave it in one spot for quite a while so that it digs these grain marks quite deep and it leaves a really nice result once you sand it. This is a hand planer. You use it on the edges of the wood and along the face of the wood and then a hammer. That's mostly everything that we've been using. Thank you. 
Fancy tools can make things easier to do, but to be honest, I got started with barely any tools. Maybe just a hammer and the wire cutter and maybe a hot glue gun, and that's all I used for years. And in part, that means that you can do so much with a very limited set of tools. But I also think that's part of the reason why I still get intimidated by electric tools. The type of things I didn't really grow up with as an expectation for me to learn or know, they're still hard for me. Me? Yeah, so many gray hairs. <laughs> I'm officially getting tired. Yeah, understandable. But I still dream of a day where I can use any tool and not be scared. Okay, so I look and feel a little bit crazy. We've been standing for like a long time. <laughs> you want to show them the mess? This is a huge mess. Literally insane. So what we're dealing with right now in your apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it is now time to finish the table and really make it come to life as like a vintage kind of vibe because as raw pine, it's not it. But first, what I want to do is add some little furniture feet leveler things. So I got these from Home Depot. This is the size hole you need to make for it, which is insanely large, 1132. Oh, to show you the ricketiness. Hey, why is it not rickety? Wait, what? Wait a second, it was, it was rickety on the floor. Ah, there you go. So yeah, we're gonna put some feet on it. Oh, and in case you were wondering, it's not that the legs are different lengths and that I messed up anything with that, they're exactly perfect. It's the fact that the tabletop is warped because when it's upside down, look at this. So we're just trying to fix and compensate for that. And that's the importance of picking wood that's not warped, which even though I picked through it, still worked. I think we're good. <laughs> Time to finish this, but the first step is gonna be to condition the wood. Why, you might ask? I've never conditioned wood before, but that would explain why a lot of times when I work with pine, it ends up splotchy. According to the interwebs, you are supposed to condition it. And since this is a proper furniture piece, I'm gonna listen to what you're supposed to do. So I got this little thing of pre-stained wood conditioner from Winamax, Minwax. You know, I was once actually diagnosed with dyslexia, exhibit A. By the way, I'm on my own for the rest of finishing this bench, so it's just you and me. Also says you're supposed to stir. The pan of this literally says, especially good for use on pine. I really do believe that anything is possible, but I never used to feel that way. The biggest part of anything being possible, that we can control at least, is showing up again and again trying to improve and trying to figure something out. Some of us are lucky enough to have been taught firsthand, but for me, especially as a girl, that wasn't the case. Hello, I'm coming to you from later that night. I wanna show you an issue I'm running into here. On some parts of the wood, there are just like these sections that are super light that aren't picking up the pigment nearly as much. Kinda worked. Good morning. So we are officially going to move on to the final step for the table and that is going to be applying the top coat. Now I have an old top coat finish and I don't know how much I have. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that it's gonna last. I picked up the can and I was like, I don't know if this is enough, but we'll have to find out. And hopefully for two coats and I'm questioning if it's enough for one, but we'll see.
Hello, so it is now the next day and I have officially finished the table. I'm very proud of myself for doing the final touches and all the finishing work and really bringing it home. It's now in the entryway and it looks fabulous. You will wanna stick around for after I show you the final reveal because I'm gonna share with you a really interesting price breakdown of not only what I paid, but of many ways that you could have built it for much cheaper than what I paid. So if you're ready, I'm going to show you the reveal in five, four, three, two, one. I love it. obsessed with this. This looks so good. It looks exactly like a reclaimed wood piece. It is smooth. It looks professionally finished. It's amazing. It's better than anything I could have hoped for. Okay, so are you ready for this very interesting price breakdown? Because there's actually a way that you can do this for much cheaper than what I paid. So I got one two by 10 by eight for the tabletop, that was $21. I got two two by three by eight, which were $33. My wood conditioner was 14, my stain was 22. The top coat I used was 30, although I already owned it. That little drill attachment with the wire was six, the planer was 16. I did buy a bag of rags for seven and the leg stabilizers were also seven. So that brings the grand total for if you wanted to get all the exact products I used to $156. Now keep in mind tables like this typically online on Etsy or at custom shops are like $500. So in that regards, I still saved money. However, I actually didn't spend $156 because I did have the top coat. So I actually only spent $126. But I have figured out several ways that you could cut down the cost to a fraction of the price. <laughs> so for the table legs, you could cut down the price from $32 to $10 by getting regular pine wood instead of select pine and that will save you 20 bucks. The wood conditioner that I got was $14 but I found other ones online that were 10. For the wood stain I didn't know how much I would need so I bought a big container but you really only needed barely any so you really just needed this small one which would be 14. The top coat that I used was $30 but I have seen other ones from Verathane that are only $20. If you went ahead and got the regular pine wood instead of the select pine you, you probably probably wouldn't need the planer because the edges would already be kind of rounded. This is the first time I actually used rags. Every other time I've ever stained anything, I just have used a cut up t-shirt. So that would be free. And lastly, the wood stabilizers. If you pick a piece of wood that's not warped, you could save yourself $7. So with all of these little money saving tips in mind, the grand total would now be $81. However, obviously if you already own the wood conditioner, a stain and a top coat, that can bring your total to about 40. Could I have used a stain that I already had? Probably. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.